Voice of America. This is an organization that essentially has been around since the 1940s. Now, this organization has been what many people rightfully acknowledge is a propaganda outlet of the United States, most specifically for U.S. foreign policy. Now, this takes many forms around the world. Radio Free Havana, Radio Free Asia, Radio Liberty, Radio Free Europe, and all kinds of manifestations, all of them probably proclaiming themselves to be freedom, therefore the freedom of everyone and the freedom of this and the freedom of that, when really all it is is the freedom of the market and freedom to promote pro-U.S. candidates in order to be able to interfere in the country, particularly steal their resources, etc. As I said, U.S. imperialism. And it makes all these manifestations all over the world, all of them funded by the United States government. And this fact that it's funded by the United States government isn't even a secret. Voice of America was established in 1942 and the VOA Charter Public Law 94-35 and 103-415 was signed into law in 1976 by President Gerald Ford. VOA is headquartered in Washington, D.C and is overseen by the U.S. Agency for Global Media, an independent agency of the U.S. government. An independent agency of the U.S. government. And we're, we're really supposed to believe that. This is, this is public knowledge. Like this, this was signed into law by the U.S. government that this organization, this institution was created. And it's very clear when you just even make a cursory glance at what it is that they broadcast to the public, to the entire world. And it's all information designed to promote the United States and its foreign interests. Think about, even, even just invoke the image of Radio Free Havana and the utter nonsense that has come out of that organization over the decades. All of it calling for the overthrow of Cuba, a democratically elected socialist government. For what? For U.S. interests. And not even to mention the fact that it was mostly created. It was started in Europe as a way to counter communist information or the, the communist influence throughout Europe, particularly the Soviet Union, of course. Because there were many socialist countries at that time and socialism was gaining a lot of ground. By the 1970s, most of the Soviet Union had an equal to, if not higher living standard than people of the United States. You know, minus the school shootings. But that's the point here. And we have something that was deliberately created to undermine anyone who would disagree with them. For example, if the Soviet media pointed out the United States keeps invading countries to steal its resources, it would have to counter that. Because, you know, that was kind of true. So what we have was something that was originally created to undermine communism in general. That's now still around for purely U.S. imperialists imperialist interest. That speaks volume. Radio Free Liberty has done nothing but promote the most far-right political organizations inside of Europe. Some of those that are the most absolutely horrendous racists, bigots, and quite often frequent murderers. They're big defenders of the Ukrainian government and its known connections to neo-Nazis and entire neo-Nazi militias like the Azov Battalion. And this has been going on. There's Radio Free Asia that does essentially exactly the same thing. It does nothing but attack every single country that's not under U.S. influence. Uh, whether that be China, uh, the wavering Philippines, Burma, just anywhere in general. It's all about promoting U.S. language. Now, not, oh, I don't even want to mention Voice of America Persian. If you couldn't get any more <laughs> of a very obvious lie... An obvious propaganda outpost, it would be Radio Free Persia. It's an entire radio station dedicated directly to lying to the Iranian people and tried to spread discontent. We saw with the attempted color revolutions. There was about 100 students, 100 uh, college students who, went, who had a protest about uh, certain religious doctrines in the country. And they, them being Voice of America and the American media in general completely blew it up as if it was like this massive color revolution that was taking place. And it was complete and absolute nonsense. Now let's even put even further that it was 
even more recently stated that the people in charge of the U.S. Agency for Global Media were concerned that it would be essentially taken over by Trump and turned into a 24-hour news network specifically for glorifying him and promoting him personally, which would have undermined U.S. efforts to spread information globally in order to forward imperialism. and speaks much to the ego of the former president. But fortunately for the world, that never happened. It continues to remain in the hands of just the general uh, pro-imperialist forces within the country. I mean, you could fact check anything they claim over and over and over again, and you will find that they are outright lying. And that's the point here. Recognize the enemy. Recognize when someone is lying to you. Because if U.S. imperialist interests is the truth to you, there's something wrong with you. And it's important to know who's lying to you so that you know who to be more critical of. You should always be critical of media, but be most critical of the ones that don't even hide the fact that they are nothing more than puppets of the US government. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, Comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.